Hello, you're watching Access, and this is our look at the 20 games you simply must play on PS4 in 2018. A list that includes leading an Android revolution, eating the population of London, and creating literally anything at all and sharing it with the world. First of all, though, it mostly includes this. There are, of course, loads of specific reasons to be excited about the return of God of War, Kratos' beard, which looks like it could take down most of the series' old bosses on its own, the new Norse setting, or the fact that, as revealed recently by director Corey Barlog, the game is shaping up at a whopping 25 to 30 hours playtime. But the most compelling reasons of all are the fact that this is more God of War, the return of one of PlayStation's true big players and the first time that the series' mix of slick combat, grand settings and constant fury have been showcased from the ground up on PS4. And it's also the first time we've seen a different side to Kratos from the limb-tearing embodiment of anger. This time his paternal side is a focus and his journey is as much about being a father to his accompanying son as it is about being a warrior. Dragon Ball Fighters is the game I've been wanting for about 15 years now, ever since my daily ritual of running home from school to stick Cartoon Network on and watching Goku power up to Super Saiyan whatever it is now for 20 minutes. You'll have heard this said lots, but I'm going to say it again. Dragon Ball Fighters is exactly like playing the show. The crisp, vibrant colours, the faster than the human eye can detect punch flurries, the outrageous floor-to-air to floor-again combos, the teleporting, the kamehameha ring It's wonderful and smooth and brutal, with a character roster that includes all your favourites and Krillin, and just wait till you see some of the finishers. Your eyes will be popping out your head like Hercule at the Cell Games. January the 26th, Hurry up, please. Timeless is a word often used to describe Eco and its follow-up Shadow of the Colossus, and to be fair, it's proving pretty accurate. To sate the needs of fans demanding more heartbreak, scale and unique action following the long-awaited release of The Last Guardian, Shadow of the Colossus is getting the full remaster treatment and will be arriving again in February. It's wide open plains and mammoth wandering giants looking more spectacular than ever. A perfect way to revisit the surest of classics, or a wonderful opportunity to discover something extraordinary. If you're a fan of JRPGs or just things that are brilliant, then you absolutely have to play Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom when it launches on PS4 on the 23rd of March. This sequel to one of the most critically acclaimed role players of the last decade is set hundreds of years after its predecessor, so don't worry if you never played the original. Nino Kuni 2 is a brand new story with a fresh cast of characters, although series veterans will be familiar with the gorgeous Studio Ghibli inspired world in which it's set. You control Evan Petty Whisker Tildrum, a young boy on a quest to reclaim his throne. Naturally, this means battling hordes of magical nasties, hiking across a beautiful and varied open world, and teaming up with a band of ragtag adventurers. Classic JRPG fare, but executed with expert flair by developer level 5. Basically, get Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom on your wish list, like yesterday. Vampire was one of our favourite finds at E3 2017, a supernatural action RPG set in a gothic early 20th century London developed by the studio behind Life is Strange and Remember Me. It has an independent spirit backed up by blockbuster ambition, and the results are interesting. Our vampiric protagonist, Jonathan Reed, is also a doctor, his desire to help the sick tempered by his need to, you know, eat people. The game's semi-open world, with neighbourhood hubs comprised of fixed populations, plays into this tension. Reed can investigate London's population to single out the wicked for a midnight snack, or, if you choose, he can just eat literally everybody. Body. There's nothing else quite like this on the horizon. Expect to find us feasting on the unworthy in the first half of 2018. If you're after something a little different this year, and if you're a fan of 80s nostalgia, then you must play Crossing Souls, an awesome top-down action adventure that just bleeds retro cool. 
from the pixel art style to the fully animated cutscenes that look every inch like the brilliant cartoons you'd wake up for at 7am every Saturday morning when you were a kid. In Crossing Souls, you can freely switch control between a gang of friends, each with their own unique method of combat and traversal. Making use of each will help you take down bosses and solve puzzles, but then you can also use the Duat Stone, a magical item that sends you to the world of the dead. This opens up brand new passageways which aid in your quest, which is just really cool. So yeah, a gang of teenage friends caught up in a supernatural adventure. Fans of the Goonies, E.T., Super 8 and Stranger Things, get Crossing Souls in your 2018 diary now. It's coming out on the 13th of February. This one's easy. Far Cry 5 has the same open world, choose your own carnage approach as the other Far Cry games, except this time you're fighting Christian cultists in the mountains of Montana and you have a dog. Well, technically you could choose from one of three companions, with a sniping lady or a plane flying man your other options, but since there's a button to pet the dog, you obviously have a dog. You can also blow things up, fly a plane, catch fish, punch a cow, all the essentials really, when the game releases in March. In case you didn't know, our next entry, Monster Hunter World, is kind of a big deal. Big in that the open world is massive, big in that the monsters you'll hunt make Jurassic Park look like a petting zoo, and big in the sense that the Monster Hunter series has, to date, sold more than 40 million copies worldwide. Which makes the fact that Monster Hunter is returning to PlayStation for the first time in years incredibly exciting. Naturally, it's the most beautiful looking Monster Hunter ever, but the main draw has to be the fact you can battle monsters in four player co-op in some of the most incredible environments in the series to date. These aren't traditional boss battles with predetermined boundaries, the entire world is your stage and can be used to your advantage. Maybe you'll get up high and mount your enemy, perhaps you'll snare them with an environmental trap or lure them into the nest of an even bigger monster. The possibilities, much like our excitement levels, are endless. Dreams is a game unlike anything you've played before. Developed by Media Molecule, the creative geniuses behind Little Big Planet and Tearaway, Dreams sees you playing through a story with an art style so beautiful and unique that it really does look like it's been crafted from ethereal thought matter. And we don't even know what that is. We've just made it up. Apt, seeing as how you can also create your own levels inside Dreams as well, with a flexible toolkit that means the only limit is your imagination. We can't wait to see the wondrous places the community takes this game, it's going to be incredible. Coming to both PS4 and PS Vita in February is Secret of Mana, a from the ground up remake of the classic action RPG originally released in 1993. This is massive, one of the most important and critically acclaimed games of its generation, Secret of Mana has held a special place in fans' hearts for over two decades. With vibrant visuals, a compelling story, memorable characters and simple yet effective combat, it's easy to see why. While most top-down RPGs at the time opted for a turn-based system, Secret of Mana went real-time, offering an exciting immediacy that made gameplay fresh and rewarding. And now it's coming to PlayStation in full 3D, in high definition, and with voice acting. Massively exciting for fans who can't wait to play it again, but perhaps even more exciting for those of you who never played it the first time round. Do you remember when Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag came out and everyone was like, man I wish Ubisoft would take the ship stuff and just do a pirates game on its own, and then they did, and that game is Skull and Bones. It's 1721 and you're a pirate, obviously, and it's your job to go to the Indian Ocean and pirate things, which means engaging in tactical naval battles, singing sea shanties with your crew, and enjoying such banter from the men as Oi, do you fancy snorting some fish piss? Not really, unnamed crew member, but we will be sailing the heck out of the seas when Skull and Bones arrives at the end of next year. 
if you like your RPGs grounded and realistic, then you need to pay attention to Kingdom Come Deliverance, which, if you're after a quick pitch, is basically like Skyrim without the magic and the dragons. Set in the early 15th century in the medieval Kingdom of Bohemia in what is now modern-day Czech Republic, Kingdom Come prides itself on realism and historical accuracy. Everything from the towns you visit to the armour you wear is based on real life. In fact, the only fictional thing is you, Henry, a man on a quest to avenge the murder of his family. There's as much to do as you'd expect from a massive open world RPG, but crucially you can choose how and when you do those things. It's almost guaranteed no two playthroughs will be exactly the same. Plus, we're massively into that flat, grey-green colour palette. Warhorse Studios has nailed the look and feel of rural Europe, and we can't wait to gallop through those wet, muddy fields. If someone asked, would you like a vast open world sci-fi shooter from the makers of the original Mass Effect trilogy, the answer is obviously yes. Yes, and I hope it looks like the gameplay we've seen so far of Anthem because that game is Anthem. It looks Destiny-ish with plenty of loot and shared world mechanics, Titanfall-ish with exosuits which, without getting too excited, seem to fly, and also Avatar-ish with the portion of the game shown off so far taking place in a lush, exotic foreign planet. More importantly, it also looks very We Want It Right Now-ish, although for now, we'll have to wait until the game gets a confirmed release date. Telling you to play our next entry is like telling you to breathe air. I mean, obviously you're going to get Red Dead Redemption 2 when it launches in 2018, because it's going to be the biggest thing since, well, since the first Red Dead Redemption. You know what to expect here. An enormous, beautiful open world, eccentric characters, amazing missions, the feel of a Sergio Leone spaghetti western, haunting silence, huge open spaces, and then sharp, bursts of brutal action. You'll be controlling Arthur Morgan, a member of Dutch's gang who you'll remember from the first game, an outlaw who looks really good in a hat and who, we're assuming, is handy on horseback and with a revolver. As well as an epic single player story, there's also the online multiplayer to look forward to, which, if GTA Online is anything to go by, is going to be an absolute life swallower. To say we're hyped, doesn't even come close to describing how excited we are for Red Dead Redemption 2. Next on our list is Code Vein, and don't be annoyed when we tell you it's a bit like Dark Souls, which is something a lot of you seem to enjoy these days, because the game really is a lot like Dark Souls. Deliberately so. Director Hiroshi Yoshimura is on record as wanting to combine the high-pressure thrill of From Software's game with the deep narrative and anime visuals of his own previous hit, God Eater. Early gameplay suggests he's doing a fine job in a post-apocalyptic setting with touches of vampire mythology, and while Code Vein doesn't have a fixed release date, whenever it arrives, we'll be waiting for it. We're probably jinxing it by sticking it on this list, but Kingdom Hearts 3 is definitely probably coming out in 2018, we sort of promise. I've personally been waiting for this for over 10 years, despite the fact there have been some awesome Kingdom Hearts titles released during that time, introducing cool new characters and a plot more complicated than Quantum Entanglement, but come on, you know they don't really count. We want to know what happens to Sora and Riku and Kairi, to King Mickey and Donald and Goofy. We want new Disney worlds like Tangled and Big Hero 6 and Toy Story and some other unannounced ones that we can speculate about and get ridiculously excited for. We want massive open playing spaces and awesome cinematic combat. Basically, we want Kingdom Hearts 3. And this year, the year 2018 Anno Domini, we're totally, possibly, definitely going to get it. Nobody makes games like David Cage, to the point where some people can't even decide if they're actually games or like really pretty movies with buttons. Either way, we're hyped for Detroit Become Human, which sees Quantic Dream's uniquely engaging approach, this is the studio that can make putting on some trousers feel momentous, being applied to a full-on sci-fi scenario as humanity's android help start to break their programming and embark on a sentient revolution. 
This is not only high on our must play list, it's also on our must play again to get the ending we actually wanted list too. Next up, we've got Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age. Now, this is a big deal. It's the first main entry installment of Dragon Quest on a PlayStation home console in Europe since Dragon Quest VIII on PS2, and that was one of the best JRPGs ever made. Dragon Quest XI is already out in Japan, where the series is so big they have a public holiday every time a new one comes out, and is heading to North America and PAL regions later in 2018. As usual, it's both gorgeous and massive, and sees you questing, yes, the clue is in the title, across an open world and clobbering monsters in traditional turn-based battles. The fact the whole thing sparkles with the art style of Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama is an added bonus. He designed all the characters and monsters, plus there are tons of side quests and mini games to get stuck into. We cannot wait. Yakuza 6 The Song of Life is next up on our list, the latest entry in a series we're absolutely determined to make everybody play if you haven't already. And the reason is simple, they're all amazing. Yakuza 6 once again stars series main man Kazuma Kiryu as he wanders around the densely packed open world of Kamurocho, taking part in loads of mad side activities before winding down with a spot of exaggerated uber violence. You haven't experienced anything like the combat in Yakuza. It's outrageous fun, pummeling thugs who deserve it with bone-cracking punches and kicks before finishing them off with whatever's to hand. Bollards, bicycles, road signs, the pavement. Plus, the story is brilliantly compelling and the characters larger than life and instantly memorable. Don't worry if you've never played a Yakuza game before either. They're easy to jump into and you'll be hooked in no time. So please, for your own good, Play Yakuza 6. We're finishing big. Last on our list is Days Gone, the open world post apocalyptic action adventure title from Bend Studio that puts you in the boots and on the growling motorbike of Deacon St. John, a drifter and bounty hunter at the end of the world. The good news is that this particular part of the end of the world is beautiful, made from the tall trees and trails of America's Pacific Northwest, though the bad news is it's filled with swarming freakers and, often worse, desperate humans. Early gameplay has shown off day-night cycles, weather systems affecting gameplay, flexible approaches to achieving mission objectives and, of course, a really angry infected freaker bear. And we can't wait to see more. Phew! So there you have it, 20 essential PS4 games you absolutely have to play in 2018. Let us know which of these you're most excited for in the comments or if there are any you think we've missed. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything from the world of PlayStation.